you see I you can't I can't really do a lot of filming is very precarious walking across these rocks and they're slick but uh it actually it gets worse So, as luck would have it, as usual, we're always having to call an audible, but basically we took entirely too much time going across those rocks. I mean, we didn't really have a choice. It was just, I mean, it rained last night or this morning. Everything's slick. We just trying to pick our way through there, and anyway, we get to the top, and we finally get there, and, uh, you know, it's... It's like three o'clock and they don't allow hiking after dark so we ended up calling the rangers and telling them that we needed to get another uh, camp spot because we weren't sure we would make it in time to the other camp spot so anyway we're still doing uh we're basically cutting our uh hike today short by about a mile i think we're going to end up back uh, near where we uh, camped last night. Basically what that means is tomorrow we won't be hiking much uh, to get out. Which, you know, kind of disappointing. But the good thing is I don't have to, you know, be real late getting into my house tomorrow. So, But anyway, if it's... Uh, Still got enough light, I'll film when we get back to uh, camp. I mean, I, th I thought I would see this fucking blue too. Yeah. Alright, so uh, if you remember this morning or earlier in the video, I showed you something like that and I said, oh, it kind of looks like Sipsy. Well, anyway, we came. So this morning, we were coming from that way. And you basically go that way, do all that rocks, and then you go up, way up. And then, anyway. So we came back over the ridge, and then we came from that direction, which is called uh, right here, Dog Hole Trail. Dog Hole Trail. And uh, so, just to give you a little, I mean, so obviously I told you that we had crossed those rocks, and you know it's getting dark. So we're a mile and a half away from this morning. But so Adam, you know, he fell and he had that bandage on. Well, it's it's a pretty bad gash on his knee, so it's kind of hindering his movements a little bit. So uh, we're here waiting on him uh, to come back, but we don't want him to get lost, so we're just waiting on him. And uh, I don't, we don't really know how far behind he is, but uh, he ha he has, he's been a, he's been a trooper uh, after falling down. And I mean, he fell down early this morning. So, uh, but he's, he's powered through it. So uh, kudos to the weekend hiker. And uh, I think he's a little disappointed that we're not gonna be able to finish that other part of the trail but hey you know you gotta you gotta know when to call it so uh anyways guys uh I'm, we only got about an hour of daylight left so this is probably my last film until in the morning unless i can get a roaring fire tonight or something and uh maybe i can shoot a little bit more so this is the microphone right here what do you uh, what what did you think about the hike yesterday? Well, <laughs> he kicked my ass for one thing. The rocks were slippery. Probably the biggest climb I've ever done in my entire life, going up that uh, that mountain. I was tired as crap when we got back to camp, but after that, uh, I'm feeling great this morning.
I'd, I'd do it all again if I could. So we we kind of kind of got a name for him and kind of not. We're still rolling it over, <clears throat> but this guy is he's had and I'm not so I'm not giving you a line of crap right now. He is literally every day breakfast, lunch, dinner. He has had Jiffy peanut butter and crackers. <laughs> yeah, that, and that, the, somebody decided to um, tell me about this trip last moment, so I didn't really have a chance to prep my food properly. I'm not going to name any names. <coughs> <coughs> What'd you have the first night? Some fancy, some fa some human being fancy feast. It, it wasn't peanut butter. Yeah, well, what, what, I don't even remember what it was called, but it had olives and all kinds of wild stuff in it. It was very good, though. Couscous, mmm, <laughs> chicken. Yeah, it was fancy. I held my pinky out the whole time while I was eating it. But what was it, what was it called, Jack? That's it. You know what? I'm cutting this. I'm cutting this off. <laughs> <laughs> what is that thing, man? I mean, I know what it is, but <clears throat> what M. Kelly. It's Kelly Pot. So, so basically, M. Kelly ripped off Kelly cattle? No. It's kind of like hammocks. Someone invented this a long time ago, and there have been different variations after technology has advanced or whatnot. Backcountry Boiler made a design that looked precariously exactly like this mm -hmm. and supposedly they made it first but they couldn't bring it to successful production so you you know M. Kelly did it's heavy it's like 14 ounces but uh, this I'm, I brought it out here today to, or this weekend to try it out for my kayak and stuff so I'm glad it was in your in your pack and not mine I didn't slow down did I? but I will say this I'm happy that he brought it this morning because he is making the coffee. And I've got this pocket bellows because the uh, it's, it's you know it's, it's rained the last couple of days and the uh, the little twigs are, are damp. So this puppy right here um, keeps him going pretty good. It's like three dollars and fifty cents on Amazon. Yeah, something like that. These are real handy if you're using wet wood out in the uh, forest. Very so there it is, guys. The Z Pack Zero. All right, so my thoughts on the Z Pack Zero is awesome. I love it. I'd probably want to carry this pack a year before I gave some final thoughts on it. Um, never felt any discomfort, not the first time. It did ride a little bit differently than my Arc Blast, which was kind of to be expected because, you know, I didn't get the hip belt with this. <clears throat> If you own it, you'd probably want to definitely be aware of a, you know, what your water situation might be. For instance, when I was on the Pine Mountain Trail, we had to carry four liters of water. And I don't think this pack is made for, you know, carrying four liters of water plus, you know, all your gear. But uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy. When I get back to the car, I'll give it a quick weigh just to kind of see what it, you know, what the finished weight is here. So one of the things you have to do if you come to the Fiery Gizzard is to go to Jim Oliver's Smokehouse. So I just ordered a bacon, sausage, ham, eggs, grits, Texas toast, and red-eye gravy. It's going to be yummy. Bye. Yeah. All right, guys. We're finished up the trip, and I told you I'd weigh my pack when I'm done. So this is everything that I took with me, including... The water bottles, but they're empty now. Two Gatorade bottles. So let's see what we got. Nine pounds. Almost nine and a half pounds. 
So, and that's including the front pack that I was carrying as well. So you got a zero degree underquilt in there and a 20 degree top quilt. Right, so we could have saved weight if I had, you know, it was overkill on the underquilt and the top quilt, but that's all I own. So if I could go with maybe a 50 degree top quilt and maybe summer underquilt. Yeah, summer underquilt or something like that, I'd be rocking. I'd be in the eight pound range somewhere around there. Alright All right, guys. Peace. I might uh, go through my pack later. Well, maybe I can do a video on that. I don't know. We'll see. Peace.